Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Embracing the Journey podcast. Today we have somebody super special, someone who's overcome tons of adversity, had a life-changing injury, and has still managed to make something of herself. And the best part is, is we went to the same high school. Everybody, I would like mm -hmm. to introduce you to Taylor Swanson. Hey, Taylor, how are we? Pretty good. How's everything? Tell us about yourself a little bit. Yeah, so basically, I was adopted when I was about six months old. I pretty much grew up here in Seattle. Yeah. Where were you adopted? Yeah, I was from um, Ulsan, South Korea, but it's pretty close to like Seoul, the main. Yeah. Okay. So. And do you remember anything? No, I was a baby, no? so. Have you gone yeah. back? Yeah, one time. How I was think. it? Yeah, in 2016, I went back for about a month. I stayed with some of um, people we knew here. So that how was, how was that experience? That it was it was great. Um, I got to meet several pro teams for track. Mm -hmm. um, I also um, it was super interesting because we we got to stay with. Um, Kind of like what they considered the Oprah of South Korea. Ooh. So they had like um, maids and all of that stuff. Yeah. So that was right. interesting. Definitely Not a different bad. situation. For sure. Yeah. I We haven't had anybody on the show yet that's been adopted. What yeah. was that experience like? It wasn't really much different just because I was such like if I was older, it might have been different. But pretty much I all I know is here. Is... Yeah. Is your ad adopted family, are they also Korean? No, they're, um, yeah, they're white pretty much. They okay. grew up, yeah. And are you the only adopted child or? Yes, I'm the only adopted. I have like a younger sister, about a year younger than me. Okay. And how's that dynamic? Oh, it's fine. Yeah. Treated how the how same. old are yeah. you? I'm 30. Look at you. Hey, but you look like you're like 17. Yeah, you... I get that all the time. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you have an older sister. Younger sister. Younger sister. Yeah, when you're younger, yeah. So she's 29. Yeah. And what does she do? Um, she works at University of Washington in financial aid. Perfect. Yeah. And see, this is super cool because I feel like how, like being adopted yeah. and especially being adopted by someone outside yeah. of like your race or culture could be a challenge, but you don't experience that. No, I, yeah, I think it was probably cause I was so young. It's not right. like, um, like when we were really young, I think, uh, just a few years, um, my family had me go to Korean culture camp kind of just to okay. get used to, you know, my culture and stuff like that. So, and what was that like? Uh, it was fine. It was, I think what was interesting was that it's like a delegation all over in Seattle of different people who are adopted at different ages. And mm. so it was interesting to hear their stories and yeah, experiences. Has it been, again, I'm, I know that you've grown up here and you've yeah. been here your whole life. Has it been a challenge to find, um, culture here for you? Honestly, no. Cause I pretty much, it's where I grew up. Right. So. Very true. Yeah. Okay, I love it. I love it. So, so you went to you went to all grades here, right? Yeah. Elementary all the way through high school. Yeah. Did you go to university? So I did one year at Central Washington. Okay. Um, then one year at Seattle Pacific, and then I did online because I realized that with training and everything, online um, was just easier. A little bit easier. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> I want to ask a question. Okay. You went you and I went to the same high school. I'm just yes. a few years older than you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe more than a few years. Right? <laughs> um what was that experience like? Is that where you found sport or did you do sport before then? Yeah, so I started sport when I was in first grade. I did soccer, just okay. like a Pacific Northwest kid. Right, yeah. Right. And, and then and then did you play basketball? What? I just did soccer and then like when I Pretty much all soccer coaches told me I was really fast. I mm. didn't believe them, but um, then I did start track high school, 
and yeah, did really well and fell in love with the sport. Wow. So, so what are your events? Yeah. So I do sprints. So I do the 100 mainly dab a little bit in the two, but mainly the one. Right. Mind you guys, I, Taylor and I, (laughs) this is our first time having this conversation. So I'm learning just like you guys are. Um, so the one and the 200. Yeah. And is your favorite the 100? Yes. And what what's the time? What? Um, so basically, uh, I ran, my PR is 13.01 okay. for a para, which is really good. Like, I ran like 12.3 before my injury. Okay. So, yeah. Not bad. Yeah. So I've run the 100 a few yeah. times in my career, yeah. okay? <laughs> Walk me through what it's like sitting in the blocks in the ready, set, go position. Like, what's going through your mind? I just focus on one single thing that I want to work on. You know, if you have so many different things that you're trying to do, it just gets overwhelming. So just focusing on that one thing. Like, for me right now, my biggest weakness is a start and reacting to the gun. Um, So I really focus on um, that aspect of it. Right. When you say your your weakness is the reaction and going to the gun... Or are you delayed or are you too quick? Um, I'm delayed um, because of my injury. So I just can't, I just don't have that reaction. So it's about mm. trying to get as good as I can with that, knowing um, that it's part of my disability. So. Right, right. Once the gun goes off, yeah. then what's going through your head? Then it's all about, um, I guess, not thinking as much. Like if you think about too much things that are going on you're going to run slower so it's more instinctual and just attacking the ground yeah of course we'll be right back unstoppable what makes you different makes you great embrace your punch so i've heard you mention injury yeah okay and i also heard you mention paralympics yeah or para athlete for those who are not up to date with what that means. Walk us through what para athlete means. So um, it's some sort of physical disability. There's a bunch of different categories like wheelchair, um, prosthetics, uh, um, blind. Just it just um, a variety of different areas, um, and you're classified based on your disability as well as the severity of it. Okay, so. What's your category? So I'm a T44, which means um, for me, um, that's just one side or one lower um, my knee down. I don't have any feeling or any thing works down um, just on my right. So everything else is fine. It's just that one side that's affected. And do you have a prosthetic or do you have the limb, but it's just... I have the limb. Um, I wear a... um, Orthotic, um, it's an AFO, ankle, what is, what foot, ortho- orthosis. Say it so again. Ankle, foot, orthosis. So basically, um, it's um, it attaches to like the calf area and it goes all the way down your foot and has something on the bottom of the foot like a, um, yeah. Taylor, this is so cool. <laughs> yeah. Phantom pains. Yeah. Do you have those? No, because I don't have any feeling, so I don't. So, like, if I hit something, like, with my lower leg, I don't feel it, so. Okay. Do you, (laughs) could you explain to people what a phantom pain is? Um, Yeah, so basically, it's, like, kind of like if you've um, lost part of your um, limb, whatever that is, is that you still have feeling in that area, even though it's no longer there. Mm -hmm. And you have none? Yeah, I have none. So, so weird question. Yeah. Could you actually sprain an ankle on that side and not know? Correct. What are in if the the limb is no longer mobile? What would there be long term effects, or is it just what it is? It just is what it is. Like I don't see any long term effects. It's just I have to wear braces all the time to protect um, and to be able to walk. And. And it's just normal walking, not running, not anything. Yeah. Like this is your everyday. Yeah, every day. Like if like, for example, if I don't have it on, I have foot drop, so I can't lift my um, leg. 
So then I'll trip or fall or, oh, wow. yeah, so. Wow. Um, so when you're, when you're competing, are you yeah. competing against other T44s? Yes. Or are they mixing T44s with something else? Um, so there's, there's T44 and T64 for, um, so basically that's a combo. And then I've also competed against able body athletes and like just regional meets as well. So what's your favorite? Do you like going against the able body? I think, um, like for me, it's interesting because um, of my disability. I'm able. I'm not the fastest, and I'm nowhere near there. But being able to push myself in a different way, mm -hmm. rather than people that are rather close to you know my time, just be some people being so far out. Right. And yeah. Can you? explain what an able-bodied athlete is yeah so basically an able-bodied athlete is anyone that doesn't have any disability either intellectual or physical yeah so if you had a mental disability yeah right maybe like what would it be like autism or like aut being autistic yeah. or yeah. down syndrome yeah would you be in one of those categories or is there a whole different N no yeah so then that's it um, so for all those intellectual, that's a completely different category. Just, um, like my category is a specific area of a, my disability. And then there's like blindness and people mm. who are in wheelchairs, et cetera. So I have a few buddies yeah, and, um, people that I train with when I was down yeah. at the Olympic training center. Have you been in any of the mixed relays? No. Are you familiar with them? Yes, yes, I Do am. Do you want to talk about what that means so people in the audience understand? Yeah, so basically you have, um, so basically there's um, ca different categories for each of the disability, but it's called the universal relays. And basically that means that you have like each, um, so then there might be someone in a wheelchair, someone who's blind, someone who has a prosthetic or orthosis like me. Um, so they're all in one category. Or, or one relay, and then it's combo of female and male. Right. Taylor, man, I'm a fan. Yeah. Well, because I, so I, I was in a training group. Yeah. And there were a ton of para, para athletes. Yeah. And you forget that they're para athletes yeah. because they're doing all the same work, all yeah. the same drills. They're sweating. They're going through the same grief. Yeah. That an able-bodied athlete is going through. Yeah. At the end of the day, right? Like I don't have a visual yeah. problem. So I could walk to my room without the aid of someone else. Yeah. But I had training partners that didn't have that. Yeah. Right? Or I was playing basketball with one of my uh, training partners. His name was Gerard. And he was in one of the wars and yeah. had his leg amputated uh, uh, below the knee. Yeah. And we were playing basketball and my knee hit his prosthetic. Yeah. He didn't move at all. Like he was still yeah. playing defense and I was done. <laughs> right? Yeah. So it's so interesting to see that like that you guys operate at the same level as an able body athlete. Yeah. Um I coached at a university for a year down in LA. Yeah. And we showed up to this meet and one of my other training partners, his name was Blake, Blake Leeper. Do you know who he is? I've heard of him, okay. yeah. So he's a double amputee. Yeah. And we had a dude that was racing in the 400 against Blake. Yeah. Or maybe it was the 200. I think it was the 200 against Blake. And before the race, you know, my athlete came over and was like, coach, I'm going to win this race. And I <laughs> said, ah, <laughs> I don't think so, yeah. right? And it, it, it hurt me as a coach to know that my athlete was going to lose. <laughs> but I also knew Blake, and I knew how yeah. hard Blake worked. Yeah. So when that gun goes off, Blake immediately is in last place. Yeah. The moment they got to that, like, 120 mark, yeah. it was all bad for everybody. <laughs> he just came out of nowhere, right? And, like, it just looked amazing. So the reason why I'm bringing that up is because I don't I don't know yeah. physically what what it is that you're going through. Yeah. 
but I do know physically what pair athletes are capable of. Yeah. And I think that they don't get enough credit, right, for for their accomplishments. And I think that it's more of a challenge because people are unaware of what certain things mean. And I'm going to ask you a question, and sure. I don't want <laughs> any offense to be taken, okay. right? How many times do you explain to someone what it is that you do and they associate what it is that you do with the Special Olympics? Honestly. Next week on the Embracing the Journey podcast. One 200 literally changed your entire life. Yes. I had to learn a different way of connecting my body with my brain. Didn't want to believe that this was my, quote, new normal. Even though the sport has taken your leg from you, you still love it. Yes. 